Hi, everyone. I'm Christine Tully, President and Executive Writing Coach at Defend and Publish, and welcome to Episode 82, Creative Faculty Offices. I don't know where I came across this article, but there was an article written about University of Central Florida faculty who turned their offices into these very beautiful works of art, and it was in conjunction with some kind of uh, art celebration or celebrating art on campus. And in fact, I'm going to share a picture of this article up on screen, and I will also link to it in the show notes for those of you that are listening to this on audio only, but um, it, it was written in 2017, so it was a little while back. But basically, the article is about how faculty used their offices to display art and to communicate something about art with the students that walked in there but also to make sure that those were pleasurable spaces for those, um, those same faculty to go in and write. So for those of you that are on YouTube, I'll do a quick scroll through so you can see what they look like. So um, audio listeners, we're looking at a faculty office that has several paintings hung up on the wall. Um, some interviews with faculty, I'm just doing a quick scroll through so people can see there's furniture in there that's decorated, there's pictures. Um, there's a table runner that's shown that's something that the faculty member collected, but it's just a very colorful office. It looks very welcoming and inviting. Um, many of us have objects from our travels or that students have given us or just, you know, personal mementos. There's pictures of that kind of stuff too. So I'm going to uh, link to this article in the show notes so people can see what these faculty members were doing with their offices. And there's all kinds of really cool things. Like if they wanted to send a message to students about recycling, then they're using recycled materials in their office and so on. So just a really cool article. But why I wanted to talk about that um, today is because I also know from working with a couple of clients that um, people's writing spaces are getting kind of stale. Like if you've been using the same office for a long time, and, you know, it just kind of looks the same. And when you go in there, it's just not really helping you generate anything. It might be time to rethink, you know, how that office is working for you in terms of creativity. So not in terms of productivity or tidiness. We're not going to worry so much about those things. Um, and in fact, you can go back to episode 23 if you want to go way back about a year ago. I swore last summer, it's now July of 2022, but I swore last summer I was going to clean my office and it was going to be amazing. It was going to be a summer reset. It looks exactly the same and probably worse. So go check out uh, episode 23 if you want to see a really messy office. I'm sure I have pictures. Um, I said, you know, I had this goal of cleaning it. And I will say I made sort of a half-hearted attempt for a couple weeks and then just decided I didn't care. So I know I'm very fortunate to have a faculty office, so I'm not dismissing it in that way. It's just that, as we all know, with scholarly labor, including office maintenance, it, you just have to, you know, choose what you can squeeze into a day. So for me, I just decided I had other things I needed to do. But I've started thinking a little bit more about maybe it's not just so much about getting your files organized and, you know, throwing away stuff that has to be thrown away and recycling and, you know, cleaning it up. Um, so no, you know, extra coffee cups and all that kind of stuff. But thinking about how the office can actually make you feel when you're sitting down in there to work. So certainly this could extend to teaching or whatever else you're doing in there, but a lot of faculty do write in their offices if they're on campus, because of course um, we're still in the midst of a COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So at the time for people listening, if this is far off in the future, um, you know, offices are kind of nebulous at the moment. Some people have them, some people don't. We always had that same scenario, certainly with um, contingent faculty and faculty that didn't have offices. So your office might be at home. It might not actually be on a university campus. But I just want to throw out a couple things that I've been suggesting to clients that are just kind of struggling with their space, but it's not really a productivity thing. It's more just a feeling when they come in. So here's a couple of things that I threw out to somebody. Um, one faculty member wanted to start a new habit of logging into her writing every time she sat down, but we tried a whole bunch of different things and nothing, nothing would stick. Like she just could not remember to do it. Um, you know, she wanted to get to the writing right away and would say, I don't want to log in. I don't want to take my notes. I don't want to do any of that. I just want to go and do it. And why she was logging it had a real reason because she was thinking that she was writing 20 hours a week. And I'd asked her to log the writing 
because I, I just, the way that she was describing it, I'm like, mm, I feel like that's more like 11 hours a week, not 20. And, you know, she just never could remember to keep the log. So we never got around to how much are you actually writing and how much, you know, can you do in that time? So one of the things I suggested to her is I said, put something in your writing space that does not belong there. So you'll have that visual cue to remind yourself to do, you know, whatever it is that you need to do. And uh, one of the things that she said was that um, her son had these bright orange pool goggles and they were laying around in another room and she just never put them away. And so she said, you know what, I'm just going to go and get those and I'll set them on the desk because they're bright orange. And if they're, you know, I have papers all over the place, I can see them. They were like a neon color. And she said, because they're not supposed to be there, you know, they'll kind of remind me, yes, I need to put away stuff, but also they'll remind me, oh yeah, do your writing log. So it was just a quick visual cue. I had another client that I suggested this to, um, and she had, um, it wasn't a writing log that she needed to do, but she basically had to slow down with her writing and kind of think through how she wanted to phrase things. She was working on a very sensitive topic and she was type, you know, she was the type of writer that would just do a lot of free writing and write very, very quickly. But in some cases she really needed to just slow down. And we talked, there was a lot of reasons why, but in any event, um, what she ended up doing was she got a vase of these hot pink and orange, they're just fake flowers. She got them, I think, from the dollar store, if you have one of those. I know I've talked about this in uh, some of our recent webinars. I think um, maybe somebody called it the pound store <laughs> over in the UK. I can't remember now. Um, but she basically had this vase of these hot pink and orange flowers that she put on her desk, you know, spent probably $3 US on the whole thing. And she would look at them every day and be like, oh yeah, I need to slow down and, and write, you know, these, these things, you know, these passages in a certain way. So, and then finally a third client I had that I thought this was, this was really ingenious. He changed the lighting situation in his office. And all he did with that was with the lamps that were in his office. And this was a home office. He just got different color bulbs that changed, like they just changed the tone of the lighting a little bit. So his office was rather dim and he made it, he got more brighter bulbs. So basically when he would come in his office and write, and he tended to be somebody that would write at night, the light looked different to him. And that reminded him about a couple of different things. So in his case, he was trying to make sure that every time he was doing some reading and research, he would then move it into his writing, which is something that I always have clients do. I say, you know, don't spend five days reading, you know, maybe spend four hours reading and then start working it into your, you know, your writing project. So that's how he managed to make sure that he could do that. So one being a visual cue, I think is a, a great way to maybe freshen up your space in a way that will remind you about maybe a writing goal you have. Um, certainly having your faculty office become a work of art or your home office become a work of art. That's not a bad idea. I mean, my office is probably never going to get there. I don't want to pretend that it's going to. Um, but there are things that I can do to make it more beautiful. So for example, um, I'm a big fan of little kid art. So both of my kids, their artworks all over my office. And every time, even now, you know, they're in grade, you know, grade school, high school, um, it is, you know, I have some things that I could bring in from ending out the school year that I could put in there. So that's something that I could do. Um, also some faculty that do their own artwork that isn't even necessarily like physical art, but maybe, a hobby or something else like that, it might be useful. So I'll give a good example. In my case, I do play the guitar. So my guitar is at home. I have a second guitar in another spot. And then my faculty office, I have this ukulele. It's a baritone ukulele that I play very occasionally. But I realized I would sure play that a lot more if I brought it into my faculty office. And that was like a little fun break for a couple of, you know, 10 minutes or something like that. Um, and, but for me, that's also a piece of art, right? It's reminding me that I do other things. I can make, you know, make something with that ukulele. So that might be another way to, to get at being a little bit more creative in your faculty office. And I want to throw out a last suggestion that was suggested to me a long time ago at a faculty retreat, but I know the presenter was talking about the stress of trying to produce writing under pressure. And I had gone to this workshop. I was, uh, just about to submit my tenure dossier and I think I maybe had like nine months to go or something before it was due. 
I was trying to get one last article in. And I know that one of the things that she did, it was a, during this writing retreat, was that we had these 90 minute writing sessions. And then it was followed by, you know, some stretching time, you know, go outside, get some fresh air. And then she made everybody play with Legos for five minutes, um, which is kind of funny, but it really, it kind of worked because she said, look, your brain's busy trying to move all the Lego blocks. And that's one of the metaphors I've been using, I should say, incidentally, because of that workshop. Um, but one of the, she just basically said, you know, your, your brain's already moving blocks of different content and pieces. And this is a spatial way where you can actually make something and build something and, you know, have the creative play too. And one of the things I really liked about it was that every, we always got the, like the Lego break, maybe, I think we did it maybe three times, um, during that writing retreat or maybe four times. And so people got to build different things at those different points. So that might be another way just to think about how creative work or creative design or, you know, things that you throw in your office might be able to help you be more creative or more innovative with your writing or just freshen up your whole process without doing something like, oh, I have to have this elaborate time management system or I have to do, you know, this other thing or buy a new office chair. Um, that would inject, I think, a little bit of pleasure, but also the creativity that a lot of us, you know, now we have to produce it on demand but this might be a way to let it be a little bit more free flowing. So let me know what you think. If you have any great ideas for making your own office uh, creative or you wanna show some pictures of yours, we would love to see them on Twitter. So we are at defend underscore publish on Twitter. And if you wanna do some pictures, tag us in it. Um, we'll be sure to like them and share them. But this is one of those things that I'm sure I cannot suggest lots of suggestions for billions of types of offices. And so I'd love to see what people are actually doing. Happy writing this week.